Everybody else don't move. <laughs> Open in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, starting at verse 20. Look over at your neighbor. Let's make this declaration. Today is a day of declaration. There is power in the blood. Amen. How many of y'all believe that today? See, there's power in the blood. And we've been talking about the blood. We've kind of taken a look at the theological side of that for the last few weeks. Talking about sanctification and justification and propitiation and all those big Bible words today. We're just going to talk about some very practical take-home stuff. We're going to talk about the peace of God. Everybody say, the peace of God. Peace is priceless. Today we remember... Today we remember all of those in our nation's history who fought and fell, who gave of themselves to win our freedom. How many Americans in here are thankful for your freedom today? Amen? I'm thankful for it. You bet. Just in the same connotation of those warriors, those who have battled, who have fought, who have fallen, some who are fighting. See, there's. let me make this statement too. Some fell on the battlefield and they gave their life there. Some are continuing to give their life. They're alive and breathing today, but they're continuing to give their life battling for our freedom. Amen. They're continuing to serve, continuing to be there, to stand as a sentinel, to stand as a guard for us. In the same connotation that as Americans, our, our freedom has been bought with blood. I mean, I know freedom's not free. So has our faith, Christian. Our Christian faith has been bought with blood. The price is the blood of Jesus. What God's Word promises has been paid for in blood. Why don't we just go get what God's given for us? Why don't we just live up in this thing? Huh? Why don't we just go and possess the land? Why don't we just dwell in what the Lord has given us? I, I think so often that the Scripture says... Uh, we're going to be a new creation. Behold, I make all things new. Old things are passed away. But I think we're like the, the, the parable that Jesus taught. I think we try to patch up our old life. We put patches on these old wineskins rather than just going a new and living way and living that way. huh? It's new. N change. New is hard to embrace sometimes. New requires me to step out of my old ways of thinking. New requires me to look at uh, through a whole different set of lenses at something I've always looked at this way. How many of y'all know it changed when Jesus shed His blood, huh? It all changed. And it's not the same. And now if I can look at it this way, it's all new. It's all new. Now, we're going to talk about just some practical take home about the blood of Jesus. Now, let's, let's, let's talk about what the Word of God... How many of y'all know you are... Everybody say, I am. I am. Who God says, I am. Says, right? So here's what the Word of God says about you and me. It says, we are kings and priests. Everybody say, I'm a priest. We're going to talk about that. Everybody say, I'm a priest. Huh? You say, well, I don't look like a priest. I don't talk like a priest. I'm not. Huh? Listen, as a priest, here's what we know about the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the priest was responsible for the blood. Amen? He was responsible of how he handled and what he done. There was very clear instruction whenever the sacrificial lamb, that blood was slain, there was very clear instruction of what the priest was to do with the blood. Now, there were daily sacrifices that required blood. How many of y'all know that we need to learn how to, as priests, apply the blood daily in our life, in our walk with God? To learn how to, to know what that even means. If you start in Egypt, everybody say go back to Egypt. I said that's a long trip, but we'll get there and then we'll get back here today before it's over with. If we go back into Egypt, the children of Israel are in bondage, but God has a plan. I mean, y'all know God always has a plan. And in His plan, blood will be shed and the blood will be applied to the doorpost of the house. And what that is, is that is a posted sign. How many of you country boys are familiar with posted signs? How many of y'all can read? A posted sign 
around here is usually going to be bright in color. It's hard to miss, and it's a warning sign that this property is off limits. Everybody say, my heart is posted. My mind is posted. My body is posted. No trespassing, Satan. Huh? No trespass. I'm off limits. I have been bought with a price. How about you? I'm off limits. Now, just because you put signs up on your property don't mean... <laughs> right? They'll come anyway. But because it is yours. What uh, Aaron was talking about, Jesus already paid for it. It, it, it's, we're not trying to get it. We're just going to keep it. The enemy's trying to steal it back. Right. He is a trespasser. It is an unlawful trespass for Satan to put his hand on your mind, your spirit, or your body in any way, shape, or form because you don't belong to him anymore. Right. You belong to God, bought with a price. Now, he's still going to show up because he's a rebel. He's an outlaw. And he's going to come in and he's going to try and terrorize and take from you what Jesus purchased to give you. He promised you, then he paid for it. If I told every one of you, you've got a $100 sack of groceries sitting down at the grocery store, so when we get out of church, if you'll just swing by, tell them you're from West Side and pick up your groceries, why wouldn't you go get them? If they've been bought and paid for, I mean, it's a very simple illustration. I mean, I know Jesus said when it's finished, he paid for it, it was finished, it was done. There's no argument that hell can offer that can come against the cross and destroy it. So let's talk about the purchase of the blood. And here's one of these take-home purchases. Here's today in this grocery store, this supermarket of heaven, let's take home a box full of goodies today. Let's talk about peace today. Let's talk about the blood of Jesus Christ that has purchased our peace. Look with me, Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And having made, everybody say past tense. Can you see that? Right? Isn't that the verbiage there? And having made, it's already done. So I'm going to keep hold of this. But I find situations, I find battles all the time where the enemy's trying to steal my peace from me. Now, we've taught this for years. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to teach it again and put it in this for those who may not have heard it. Maybe they didn't get it. Maybe this is your first time. If you lose your peace, you'll lose your joy. If you lose your joy, you'll lose your strength. And if you lose your strength, you'll lose the battle. The joy, everybody say this. This is Nehemiah 8 and 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If I lose my peace, I've been walking in peace in something. This is what the Lord has purchased for me. I'm walking in peace about it, but all of a sudden I get into anxiety. I get into fear. I start, I got a bad report. Some of you have got some horrible stuff going on. Some of you have got some real battles. It's tough. Some of them are life and death. Some of them are family. Some of them are divorce. Some of them are finance. You've got some tough stuff. There's some hard things going on right there for those that are watching hard things. How are, you going, how are you going to fight your battle? See, because what I have found out through years of walking with the Lord and sometimes doing it right and sometimes doing it wrong, fear is a terrible advisor. When I'm stressed out, when I'm making decisions because of anxiety, well, I'm just going to try this, and then I'm going to try this, and that didn't work, and I'm going to try this. How I many all know, it'd be better to just walk in peace and say, God, so listen, this is what you purchased for me. Now you lead me and you guide me because you have a great plan. You have put a posted sign just like you did in Egypt. And when death came in Egypt, there was a posted sign. Everybody say the power of the blood. And death couldn't come past it. Posted. Now you're going to have to, in the name of Jesus, how many of y'all know that you have the authority in the name of Jesus huh, to arrest any power of the enemy? Jesus said these words about you. These are not mine. These are his words. Behold, I give you power over, what did he say? All the power. Everybody say that with me. Behold, I give you power over all the power 
of the enemy. Now we need to align our actions and our words up with what he said. Hmm? Because if he said it, it's right. Here's what happens. When I start losing my peace, see, having made peace through the blood of his cross. How many of all made peace with God? Hmm? I've heard that for years and years. I'll be sitting at somebody's bedside that's about to pass to go on into eternity. And this question, this, this is the way it's phrased. So, Pastor Dave, have they made their peace with God? How many of all heard that? Huh? Peace, peace with God is a pretty important thing, isn't it? Because here's the fact. If you're at war with God, you're going to lose. I have been at war with God. You can see several different examples of that throughout Scripture. How many of y'all remember the example of the Apostle Paul? He's at war with what God's doing. God's doing a new thing. The Apostle Paul is living. Is Saul of Tarsus, right? Before his name was changed. Saul of Tarsus has authority by the old way to go and arrest in the city of Damascus. He has authority to go and arrest anybody that he finds who is a follower of Christ. But the old has passed away, the new has come in, and he found himself at war with God. And Jesus had a way, how many of y'all know the Lord's got a way of getting our attention sometimes? And I hope that he don't, have to get your attention or my attention by uh, knocking us down off of our donkey huh and and this is (laughs) it's amazing to see how quickly Saul of Tarsus who thinks he has authority who thinks he has power in this realm and he did how many all know that's not like the power of God amen there's power in the blood of Jesus and Jesus the resurrected Savior he's already paid the price he's already went to hell he's got the keys he has risen from the dead and Saul Jesus took it personal Saul goes and he's going to arrest Christians in Damascus and Jesus meets him on the road to Damascus and while Saul is sucking dust he says Saul Saul Why are you persecuting me? Don't you know it's hard to kick against the pricks or the ox goad? Huh? Anybody ever? I'm familiar with an ox goad, a cow goad. Today we have them and they are electrified. Awesome. Much better than a sharp stick. I had a 2,000 pound bull several years ago turn on me in a load and shoot. I was glad I had this little short stick. That's all it needed because I persuaded him to turn around. That hunk of hunk of burning love, 2,000 pounds. He was persuaded to turn around and go the right direction and loaded in the trailer. And I didn't get stomped to preacher powder. It was a great day. (laughs) Why would you keep fighting what God's trying to do in your life? I know there's nobody like that here, but if you meet somebody who is stubborn, going the wrong way this week, you tell them like Jesus told Saul of Tarsus, first of all, why? And it's hard. You're going the wrong way. Look over to your neighbor and tell them, turn your cat around. All right? You've heard us. If you're stroking your cat's fur the wrong way, turn your cat around, right? What happens when you stroke his fur the wrong right, right, right. Turn the cat around. Get headed in the right direction. And that sum up, that's a word for some of you. That's why you're not, that's why you're not winning the battle. That's why you're not walking in the peace of God. You're still trying to go your own way. And that's where Saul of Tarsus was. And his response was, Lord. He didn't even know his name yet, but he knew his authority. Huh? Lord, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus. I'm the one you're coming to persecute in Damascus. And this is not going to work well for you. If you're at battle, if you're at war with God today, everybody say, make peace with God. Because having made peace through the blood, how does peace come? It comes through the blood. It comes by respect and honor. Let's... Let's, let's, let's look at another one. Keep your place in Colossians 1.20. Go with me to Romans 5 and, and 1. And we're going we're to look at another passage here real quickly, and then we're going to go back to Colossians. 
Therefore, this is Romans 5, 1. We're going to read down to verse 3. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Everybody say, I have peace with God. Now, either that's a true statement or you need to make that a true statement. Let me, let me, let me, let me share a couple of lines that I wrote as I was preparing this message. Here's, here's the first one. Peace with God is the first key to victory over the enemy. Peace with God is the first key. Listen, you're not smart enough, you're not sharp enough, you're not talented enough, you're not good looking enough to win some of the battles you're going to fight on this earth. You're going to deal with stuff that you just ain't going to be able to overcome. How much power is in the blood? More than enough. More than enough. Whatever the devil can throw at you, don't even come close. There's power in the blood. When he said, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. So if he gave me power over all the power, and he gave Marsha power, and Pastor Danny power, and Miss Beth power, and that's a lot of power to be handing out. I've given you power. Everybody say, I got power. Huh? See, I'm walking in peace. Here's my take home today. In the midst of the storms, what did Jesus say to the storm? Peace be still. Chill out and behave yourself. You in a storm today? Are you in a trial? Are you in a battle? And I know that some of you are. Here's the take home. Here's your grocery list. Here's your goodies. You learn how to walk in peace in the middle of these trials. Because if you're not walking in peace, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to make decisions on your own intellect or from emotion. I'd rather make decisions based on faith and the Word of God and revelation from Him. Amen? Peace comes with God. Peace with God comes through the blood. Jesus purchased that peace. Let me say this to you. The peace with God comes from unconditional love extended to you and an unconditional surrender on your part. Peace. Here's the peace treaty. Here's where we come to terms of peace. While we were sinners, while we were enemies, Christ died for us. God showed us His love. So He extends, here's the terms of peace. I will extend you unconditional love. I mean, I know that's a really good thing to have from God Almighty. I love you. I love you. Unconditional love. I extend you. Here's the conditions of our peace treaty. Unconditional love. What's required of me? Unconditional surrender. Your Lord. Before he knew his name, Paul made the Saul of Tarsus made that surrender and he said, Lord, who are you? I don't know your name, but I know your Lord. I surrender. Make your surrender today. And when you make that surrender, then walk in what has been purchased for you. You'll see that we're reading a bunch out of Paul's writing. Paul, who was trained in the Old Covenant, saw with eyes of the New Covenant. And he lived a new and living way. Now then, next line that the Spirit of God laid on my heart for this First line was, peace with God is the key to victory over the enemy. Everybody say, peace with God. Now say, peace of God. Peace with God is different than having the peace of God. Because I have peace with God now, I also can walk in the presence of the peace of God. I can be looking at... Difficult situations, hard circumstances. Some of you guys are in some things that are they're hard, they're horrible. Understand those things. Are you going to let your emotions, you're going to let your own thought or your own understanding lead you, or are you going to let the peace of God lead you? Isaiah 55 and verse 12 says, you'll go out with joy, you'll be led. Everybody say, I'll be led by peace. Peace will lead you 
or this frantic, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I got bad news. Did you hear what the doctor said? Did you hear what the lawyer said? What about the banker said no? I, huh? And we have this frantic emotional meltdown. Or we have a posted sign over our mind. And we say, no, you don't get to have access to my brain because I know what the Word of God said. How many of y'all know His promises are true? Huh? The, in your Bible, there are over 2,000 promises, and either they're true, and they're righteous, and they're faithful, and they're paid for. Or it's all a lie. If it is true, and it's paid for with blood, then Christian, live free. Live in faith. Live in what God has purchased through the death and the blood of His Son. There's, there's the price. Our freedom as Americans has been paid for with blood. We remember that on this day. Everybody say amen. amen. Hmm? I still believe in one nation under God. I still believe in honoring the flag of the United States of America. I don't think that you have to dishonor the flag to walk in your freedom of speech. Now, I'm just going to put it out there where I stand. You don't have to agree. That's where I stand. I believe that there are other ways that you can form your words and get your point across without dishonoring the blood and the sacrifice. Those that have given. We honor them this day. Then in honoring them, how many of y'all know a great man of God went home recently? Billy Graham went home. We honor that warrior of faith. And you can look back and you follow those guys that... You look at uh, Charles Spurgeon's and Oral Roberts's and all of those men of faith. You look at the Apostle John and the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter. Those men of faith with blood purchased the faith that you and I are, uh, that you and I are walking in today. Let me ask you this. What are you going to pass off to the next generation? It's your responsibility. You are a priest before God. The, the father's... In Egypt, when Israel is in bondage in Egypt, the fathers were responsible for the blood of that lamb. Dads, listen to me, young men. You are the priest of your home. You are the pastor at your house. It is your responsibility to, and take that responsibility to lead your family in a godly path in this ungodly world that we're living in today. Don't put that job off on your wife. Bow up a little bit. Huh? Let me see your quills a little, huh? You ever seen a porcupine quill up just a little bit? They're kind of fun to play with, but from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be out in Colorado and Wyoming about every summer for years and years and years, and from time to time we'll find a, porcu a porcupine, and, and we will... Uh, what, I don't want to talk about harassing or terrorizing him. But we'll get him to quill up. You understand why? Because the kids love to see those little quills and stuff. I don't want to pull them out of my leg. How many of y'all know that the enemy knows when you're quilled up? Huh? I mean, your husband or your wife knows when you're quilled up. There is no doubt in my mind when Marcia's... You understood what I said. Right? And I'm talking about peace today. Being quilled up. Because it's worth protecting. It's worth protecting. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access. Everybody say, I have access. By faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. Everybody say, hope. Hope is confident expectation. When a woman is expecting, it's not long till that starts showing, and in time, that baby's coming. Amen? What do you confidently expect from God? Got my mind posted. I'm expecting what God promised. Not all the stuff that, the, that my emotions or the world's trying to tell me. Huh? My eyes are trying to tell me this. My ears are trying to tell me this. The doctors have come and said this, this, and this. They said, we've done all we can. That's all right. They're doctors. They're human beings. We know that. Amen? We know that. We understand that. You have to develop your faith now. It's hard to put the roof on your storm shelter when the tornado's blowing. Huh? Listen to me. Don't wait till the storm hits. 
Don't wait till the storm hits to build your storm shelter. Build now. Build now. And you build it upon the rock. Build like the wise man. Amen. Let's read verse 3. Verse 3. See, we're talking about the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory. Everybody say, we glory in tribulation. I'll be honest with you, I don't most of the time. Most of the time, I try to get through it. How about you? I mean, that sounds pretty high to me. We glory in, thank you God for this tribulation. I'm just glorying in this thing. Thank you. I'm usually trying, but what I want to do, I think God has a level above it's new. It's different than what I've been walking in. I think God has more than just surviving and getting by. I think He has a place where you can say, if you want some of this, devil, come and get it, because I'm posted, and you've walked before, and you're going to lose again. The same outcome you've had before is going to be the same outcome you're going to have this time. Or you can say, listen, you may have beat me last time, but I have changed. I have grown. I've got more of the Word of God in me. Not only do I have more of the Spirit of God in me, the Spirit of God has got a whole lot more of me. Huh? You may have won that last one, but you won't win this one. This is a different day, and it's a different fight, and it's a different me. Can you say amen? Now, you guys act like you've been taking volume all morning. I'm excited about this thing. You got, okay, that's a... I'm just going to try to live and I want to challenge me to live up. I want to dwell in these things. I want to be able to fight the good fight. I want to press in in this thing. Now, it'll help me if you'll help me. All right? Thank you for all three of you helping me. That was awesome. Okay, you're dismissed. I'm going to finish the sermon without you. I had a good time in early service. I'm going to have a good time in this one. Let me just tell you this. Early service was a lot of help. They're just leaning right in. You guys are, I love you, but you're trying it today. All right. Back to Colossians 1 and 20. No, we're good. We're, we're good. Colossians 1 and 20. Come on. Listen, you have to be passionate about what you're willing to die for. And you ought to be passionate about what you're willing to live for. Huh? And I am passionate about this. I've been walking this for a long, long time. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me just make it real. A year ago, the last of July, we went on vacation. The first night of vacation, we were in Colorado in a camper, and I had a dream. We knew that we had some things going on. Jeff and Bree had been trying to get pregnant and uh, hadn't been successful, and so we were having some tests run. And so before we knew uh, what all was going on and before we left, we knew that there were some things going on, but we wasn't sure. I've walked with God long enough to know when God speaks to me, and sometimes He speaks to me through a dream. And when I had that dream, and Marshall will tell you this right here, I woke up the next morning and I was literally overcome. My peace literally was shattered. And I was to the point that I was phys- I'm on vacation in Colorado. A place I love as much as the Ozark Mountains. I love the Colorado Mountains. I love being there. There's something about that big sky and that big country out there. And it calls to this old boy right here. And where I should be having, if, if my emotions and my feelings and my mind was ever going to be in a place where I ought to have peace, I should have had it there. And I knew that God was preparing me for a battle. Now, there's been a whole bunch of you that's fought that battle. You've prayed, you've fought, you've warred with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I have my part to play in that battle. It was Bree's battle, but I have my part to play in that. And my peace was shattered. I spent three days. And this is just, I'm I'm just going to tell you, this is how I fight my battle. I spent three days. I didn't want to be around anybody, I, and I'm with the people I love the most on the face of the earth. I'm, I'm with family, and, and we're there together in and, and the place I want to be. And uh, I ought to just be ready to go and catch trout and ride around and enjoy and, and a little carefree. And I just want to go and get in God's presence. God, I, my heart and my spirit is just racked right now. And I fought 
for three days in prayer and in fasting and in God's Word to get that peace back. Now listen to me. What I didn't know, I didn't know what we was going to be dealing with. I didn't know that when we got back that we was going to hear the words leukemia. I didn't know how long that the battle was going to be. I didn't know all the, 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 the giants we would fight in that. I knew one thing. I knew one thing. I knew I had peace back. It was going to be okay. God had it. How many of y'all know you can go to the bank on that one? Huh? Isaiah 55 and verse 12 says, You'll go out with joy. You'll be led forth by peace. And so I just started letting peace lead me. I'm just going to have peace about this thing. And so then, when peace is leading us, we're not making decisions based off of emotion. We're not making decisions based off of this anxiousness and this stress. We're making decisions off of what the Word of God says. Now then, Colossians 1.20. Let's go back. Colossians 1.20. And having made peace through the blood of His cross by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. Everybody say, we're reconciled. Irreconcilable differences. I'm no longer, I'm not divorced from God. I'm not separated from God. We have irreconcilable differences. I've counseled so many couples through the years, and some of them have ended up in divorce. And, and, and the reasons that were cited were irreconcilable differences. I mean, I don't know God worked it out where there's no difference. We can be at one again. We can be at one to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies were at in your mind. Hmm? Look over at your neighbor and tell them a double minded person is unstable. Hmm? Isn't that what your Bible says? So, what do you believe about Jesus? What can you get solid on? Because the test and the trial that you're dealing with, you need to be solid on that. Well, here, here's, here's, what, here's what the world said. Here's what the doctor said. Here's what the banker said. Here's what the lawyer said. Here's what they said. Here's what God said. Have you all ever been in that tug of war? Huh? Here's what they said. And I'm seeing it and I'm hearing it and I'm getting pulled this way. But here's what God said. Make your mind up. Make your mind up. It will eliminate and alleviate the misery that you're going through. It is a horrible place to be the rope in this tug of war. My emotions and my feelings and my understanding of the world. Jesus said these things. Now remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Everybody say, Jesus' peace. My peace I leave with you, not peace like the world gives, right? John 14, 27, that's where he said it. My peace I leave with you, not the peace that the world's giving. There's a difference in the peace of God. See, I have peace with God, and because I have peace with God, now I have the presence of the peace of God. And when I have the peace of God, I can walk through whatever situation, and I don't know all of the end, I don't know all of the outcome, I don't even know all of the enemy I'm dealing with, but I know this, I have peace. And if I have peace, I'll make good decisions. And if I make good decisions, I'll have a good outcome. There'll be a good battle. And I may not have everything that there is to do. Not everybody I have prayed for lived. Not everybody I prayed for won. Not everybody, but I have to be, now listen to me, I have to be able to walk away from the fight knowing that I've done my best. That I've done all I could do. Huh? Because that, that's what I, I get a lot of those phone calls. Hey Dio, Pastor, could you come and be in on this one? I, I need to be able to, I need to be able to fight, fight at my best for you. Huh? And you need to be able to fight at your best. How I many y'all know we're wearing the same uniform? We're all on the same team. We need to stand together. We're a lot stronger when we stand together. Amen. Now then, you that were sometime alienated, enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you. 
This is what Jesus did so he could present us before God. Here they are, God. This is what I did. I shed my blood. I paid for this. Now they have peace through my blood. And here's who they are. Everybody say, I'm holy. I'm holy. Oh, that seems hard to say, doesn't it? Because you know you. You know how you acted right before you got to church. <laughs> Nobody saying amen now. Ooh, I may come and sit. Get the cameras right here. I'm going to come and sit down with somebody. No, I'm not. See, this is what the blood of Jesus purchased for you. This is who you are, whether you feel like it or whether you don't. Because here's, here's what happened. If you've made peace with God and you got out of step, the Spirit of God checked you up. The Spirit of God said, now listen, you know better than that. Huh? Your conscience. You're not children. You know what you should and what you... I don't need to sit here and preach to you. you now you need to and you need not to. Your spirit, your conscience, connected with the Spirit of God and your knowledge of the Word of God said, that's wrong. But we work so hard to justify ourselves. See, here, here's where the areas of battle come. The, there are three categories. Everybody say three categories. I, I, I like that Perry Stone teaches this. I wish it was original, but I'm glad Perry got on the, on the page on this one right here. Perry Stone teaches that there are three categories. One category of the battles that you're going to fight are the uninvited. Everybody say uninvited. Uninvited battles. They're the ones that come and they're just going to get in your face and they're an attack of the enemy and the enemy's going to try to beat you up and he's going to try to steal from you what Jesus paid for, for you. How many of y'all know you meet him? Those are uninvited attacks. We didn't, we didn't sit down and schedule in. Okay, let's, first of August, let's, let's just schedule leukemia. In our, really? Nobody does that. Uninvited. Next category, self-invited. Self -invited. Everybody say self-invited. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. You have done some ignorant stuff. So have I. And you invited the repercussions of ignorance into your house. Let's just be stupid and open the door for all of the results. Stupid hurts. It's like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. It feels so good when you quit. Amen. Self-invited. Category three. Category three are unavoidable. Living on planet Earth is going to cause you some trouble. Huh? Uninvited, self-invited, and unavoidable. The enemy always attacks, now listen to this, he always attacks the message. Huh? So you'll be saying, all right, man, I'm going to leave here and I'm going to walk in peace. This is what God paid for for me. I'm going to walk in this. This is my bag of groceries I'm taking on. And Satan, you're not going to steal my peace. He's going to try to rob that message before you get out to the, to the highway. Huh? You remember the sower and the seed? And it wasn't, the, the seed just barely hit the ground. Here come the birds. He's going to try to say, the enemy always attacks the message, the messenger, and the receiver. He always attacks those three. So what you're trying to receive today, don't let the enemy, don't let the enemy take what is yours. If you have made peace with God, then you walk out of here in the peace of God. And that peace will lead you. That peace will guide you. Now then, uh, I'm going to present you holy, unblameable. Look over at your neighbor and say, don't blame me. Huh? Don't blame me. I'm unblameable. You ain't got enough evidence to make that stick, devil. Huh? Anybody ever felt like you wasn't good enough for God? You got all this blame on you? Even when you're in category two of the self-invited? How many of y'all know the blood of Jesus is bigger than the self-mistakes? Thank you, Jesus. So here's what we do. We bring our mistakes under the blood of Jesus and say, I blew it. We confess our sin, and He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and what cleanse us from all unrighteousness i blew it 
again. I knew I've done it before. I did it again. But I'm, I'm trying, God. I, I really am. Help me get it this time. I, I, four of the best years of my life were the ones I spent in second grade. It took me a while to get it. <laughs> Anybody ever been a slow learner? That's the point in that, right? You know what I'm saying. All right, Marsh, come to the piano. We're going to, this is my first closing. I only have nine more. Uh, he's presenting us before God. Jesus, through his blood, presents us holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Everybody say, in his sight. You know how Jesus sees you? Now listen to me. Listen to me, Christian. This is, for, this is just for the Christian. If you've not made peace with God, this don't fit you. This is not for you. You can make peace with God and it will be yours. But if you haven't made peace with God, this don't belong to you. But if you've made peace with God, in His sight, everybody say, in His sight, in his sight. you're holy. holy. You're unblameable. Unreprovable. Oh, that feels good, Dad. That just feels pretty awesome. Because I looked at me in the mirror. You might ought to get your eyes checked. <laughs> That's how we feel. But we don't live by feelings. How do the just live? We live by faith. Now, just some quick statements about the Word of God. What it says about, about peace. Isaiah 55, 12. Write these down if you're writing. If not, go back and, 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 and look at the live stream, look at the archives, and you can get it. Isaiah 55, 12 says, You'll be led forth by peace. John 14, 1 through 6, Jesus says to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. Look over your neighbor and tell them, Let not your heart be troubled, huh? Have peace. John 14, 27. My peace I give. Everybody say, He give. His peace, not the world's peace. Philippians 4, 7. Let's read that one. Put Philippians 4, 6 up if you would, Ethan. I want to read this one to you real quickly. Be careful for nothing. I don't mean be careless or be reckless. In the Greek, that would literally read, don't be anxious or stressed about anything. If I'm not anxious and stressed, guess what? I'm in peace. And if I'm in peace... I can walk in joy, and if I can walk in joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And if I'm walking in strength, I'm going to win the battle. But I've got to get that in me now. I've got to press in. I've got to press in to press the enemy out. Because he's going to try and steal from you. The thief comes to what? Steal, kill, destroy. Jesus said, but I'm come that you might have life. The enemy is going to try. He will attack the message the messenger, and the receiver. Hmm? Now, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God. Everybody say the peace of God. And what does it do? It passes understanding. When my understanding looks at this and says, there's no way, this is a hopeless situation, but the peace of God says, you trust me, there is a way, because I'm the way, I'll make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. There's a little sign over at the end of the viaduct that says, faith makes all things possible, not easy. And then the world's going to come at you, and I've heard them tell me this, I'll be praying for somebody, and they say, he's just in denial. No, I'm not, I'm in peace. I'm not denying that my daughter-in-law is not fighting leukemia. If, if I was in denial, I'd say she don't have it. I'm calling her healed by the name of Jesus. I'm not denying what's going on. I'm calling those things which be not as though they were. I'm calling by faith on the power of God to touch that body. Well, bless his heart, he's just emotionally detached. No, I'm not. I'm in peace about it. Well, that's not right because you're supposed to be freaked out. No, I've got peace that passes understanding. See, you're operating off of a different mind than I'm operating off. Let me tell you about the mind of Christ. See, if I was just operating in my own power, my own ability, my own talents and skill, and my, all, I don't have the talent, the skill, the understanding. I'm not going to beat that giant. 
But let me tell you about the blood of Jesus and the peace. He paid for it, and I'm just going to take it home with me today. And this is how I fight my battles. I've got to have peace. And for me to have peace, I've got to have faith. And for me to have faith, I've got to hear. Faith comes by hearing. And for me to hear, I've got to shut the rest of the world out, and I need to lean in and hear Him. This is how I fight my battles. Can you stand? We're going to quit right here. Obviously, I am not done. I'm just about to finish the opening passage. <laughs> the peace of God which passes all understanding, verse 7, shall keep... Everybody say, I'm posted. I'm posted. Will keep your heart, your mind, through Christ Jesus. And the peace of God. Because I made peace with God, I now can walk in the peace of God. And when I walk in the peace of God, it keeps my heart. My heart's posted. Off limits, Satan. Now listen to me. If you don't have peace about something that's going on in your life, if you're in the battle here today and you say, listen, I'm not going to try to fake it till I make it. It took me three days. I'd have loved to have just went fishing. I needed to be in faith worse than I needed to be fishing. And so I needed to pray. I needed to spend some time with God. Lean in. I want you to win. I want you to win. This is how we fight. You keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what do you say? Think. Think on what? See, we're focused. L listen, here's what Isaiah 26, 3 says. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you because he trusts in you. That's what this verse is teaching us in the New Testament. I'm going to stay focused on you because at, when I'm when I'm, when I'm focused on you, you keep me in perfect peace. You keep me in perfect peace. No longer double-minded. I've made my mind up. I'm trusting you. I, I, I don't know all that there is. I have not walked the end of this battle. But I can tell you what I do have right here. i got peace now. And I know that if I've got peace, I can keep my joy. And if I keep my joy, I keep my strength, and I keep my strength, I'm going to win this battle. I'm coming out. Think on these things. Verse 9. This is where we're done. The things which you have both learned, received, and heard, seen in me do. Everybody say, do it. Now I'm going to read that again. Now this is the Apostle Paul. This is the guy that we was talking about that was kicking against all this stuff, Right? But he has a change of vision. I was following the old covenant, but I'm now following the new covenant, which is a better covenant established upon better promises. And let me tell you what it said. The things which you have both learned. Are you, are you learning? The things you have received. Then don't let the devil take it from you. The things that you have heard and seen in me do. I mean, I know there needs to be corresponding action with our faith. Do these things. Do not leave here and shoot your prayers to death. We're praying in faith. We got peace. And then we walk out and we start doing things that just annihilate our prayers. Don't do that when we leave. Because the enemy will come against you. He, huh? He's coming against those that receive those. Last line. And the God of peace and the God of peace. It may look like I'm surrounded. <laughs> the God of peace is with me. Hmm? You know the good thing about being surrounded? There ain't no way the enemy's getting out without a fight. Hmm? And I have peace about this thing. I'm not coming in my own strength. I'm not coming in my name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the cross. Or none of this is real. Where do you stand? Which side are you on? Which uniform are you wearing? If you are on the side of the Lord, then you remember the blood that was shed for you and you walk in the power of that blood today. Can anybody say amen? 
That's where I'm at. Father God, we love you. We thank you. This is how we fight our battles. It, it looks like we're surrounded. It looks like there is nothing we could do. It looks like it is hopeless and we are helpless and there's no way out. But what we know is we're surrounded by you. Your blood has put posted signs all over us. On the front of our heart, the sides of our heart, the back of our heart. We belong to you. And hell, you're off, you're off base, you're out of bounds. You're trespassing. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say, in the name of Jesus. Now you call your battle out right now. You call your trial. What you're going through. Or maybe you're standing in for a friend. Maybe, maybe you're praying for Leon. Or maybe you're praying for Baby River. Or maybe you're... You, you call that out before the Lord. And let's leave here in peace. Father God, we love you. We lift up these needs, these requests. We lift up these that are going through battle. And through trial. We fight our battles in faith. We fight our battles with your word and with your promises. We fight our battles with truth and the power of your blood. So we think about the things that are pure. We think about the things that are true. We think about the things that are we think about the things that are worthy of praise. We praise you today, first of all, because you're worthy, and secondly, to keep our eyes focused on you, not on our giants. You're bigger than our giants. You're bigger than our mountains. You're bigger than the Goliaths that we face. And you love us. You have my unconditional surrender. Unconditional surrender. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you for your unconditional love. I'm going to take just a, just a moment, just a pause. We're going to push the pause button. I want everybody to look up for a moment. How many fight in a battle? Hmm? And you need the Lord in this thing with you. This thing's bigger than you. Just, come on. Right, just raise your hand. We're not going to. Just raise your hand. You keep your hand up. Keep them, keep them up. Everybody look around. This is how we fight our battles. How many of y'all know we fight together? Huh? We're, we're wearing the same uniform. I'm for you. I want to fight my best. I, want, I hope I've brought you a word today that will help you. Listen, let's get you in peace on this thing. Let's press in. You take, you take this goodie bag home with you. It's yours. Jesus, your big brother, gave it to you. Cost him a lot. It's yours. Don't let the devil have it. Hmm? Here's how we fight our battles. Anybody here that hadn't made that surrender? Hmm? Anybody here that hadn't made peace with God? I mean, right now, listen. To have these things we've talked about, you need to have made peace with God before you can walk in the peace of God. Anybody? Okay. Let's finish up. Father God, thank you. Here's how we fight our battles. We fight them together. I'm praying, Lord God, for those that are here in the sanctuary. I'm praying for those that are walking. Every hand that went up. Lord God, you saw the hand. And you know the battle. You know the circumstance. You know the situation. You know the outcome. Oh, God, I speak peace now. We declare peace. It, it's your peace, Jesus. Not peace that the world gives. It's your peace. We're not in denial. We're not emotionally detached. We're not in shock. We're in peace. Jesus. Jesus. We stand together. One voice, one heart, one Lord, one Savior, one faith. We love you, Jesus. 
our allegiance is to you, Jesus. We'll not be double-minded on this thing. We're all in with you, Jesus. Thank you for the goodie bag. Thank you for peace today. It's mine. It's mine. I make that declaration, and I'm going to fight. If it takes me three days to fight through, if it takes me three weeks to fight through, I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray, I'm going to lean in till I hear from you, and I know that I know that I know I have peace in this battle. Thank you for victory. In Jesus' name. Everybody agreed, said amen.